Hi, my name is Angga Dwi Songko. I am a film director, film producer, and writer from Indonesia. Uh, my movie, 13 Bombs, uh, already released uh, in Indonesia and now screen in uh, International Film Festival Rotterdam. Mm -hmm. Okay, so since you mentioned it was released, how was the reception of the film in Indonesia? Uh, we are very fortunate that we uh, one of the box office for 2023 uh -huh. and the only box office for action movie because nowadays in Indonesia horror movie is very popular uh, so uh, it's like a one of a kind uh, moment uh, for Indonesian films that can bring one action movie in the list of box office in a year, in that year, 2023. Uh -huh. uh, we received one million, uh, more than one million viewers, uh, ticket sales wow. in Indonesia. Yeah. Okay, okay, all right, all right. And tell me a bit uh, behind the inspiration, let's say, behind the story of the film. There is, it's an action, but it's also social, political, financial, common there. Yeah, uh, uh, maybe uh, I can, uh, I need to give you some context about Indonesian film. Uh, Indonesian films are uh, dominated by drama and horror uh, because uh, to make uh, an action movie, uh, it's high stake. Means that uh, our market is still growing. So um, to put a lot of money in one film, it's very uh, risky. Uh, but uh, we, as a as a company, Visionama as a company, would like always to bring something new to the audience, and we think that this type of movie, like Thirteen Bombs, never been done before uh, in Indonesia, especially. Uh, we're not talking about action. Yeah, you know, action from Indonesia, like The Raid, for example, that's very popular. But we want to add more into not only you know martial arts but also explosions and then uh, uh, gunfight but also uh, wrap up with a, a strong message for Indonesian audience what what happened now and what makes uh, our audience uh, uh, relatable to the story and uh, we hope that uh, that way then we are not we we can also win the Indonesian audience heart but also can travel to uh, overseas so um, during the COVID uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, investment scheme investment scheme scam uh, that use uh, more like uh, Ponzi scheme uh, and in US dollar, it was billions, wow. billions US dollar, and they targeted um, more like uh, lower classes. Uh, and in Indonesia, we have 270 million people, and from the lower class, they can uh, they can pick billions of dollars and uh, when the pandemic end, the money gone and the government did nothing you know no one goes to jail uh, no one get punished and it's just it and just happen like that and uh, a lot of people suffering from 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 these situations uh, some of them uh, killing themselves some of them losing families, losing assets, and uh, this triggered me to, to think that what if these people with, after what happens to them, what happened to them, and then, and then they're getting, they're making them nothing to lose, but they want to revenge. Who's gonna uh, become the target of course the financial system and in Indonesia 
terror always always stereotyping with with a uh, sort kind of religious religion uh, issue or activity yeah. but actually uh, if we want to dig more into terrorism all that this type of this kind of terror or the ideology came from actually injustice came from inequality came from uh, poverty right so it's not about religion it's 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 always about injustice poverty and inequality that turn to be uh, manifest in wrong way of course I don't I I condemn terrorism but but this is what happened right uh, the terrorism always start from from the, the three aspects of of life like injustice uh, inequality and and poverty so uh, I want to give you know new perspective to Indonesian audience that that the terror it's not because of religious uh, ideology or mindset it's because of uh, the basic uh, things as a human being like like justice equality and and you know uh, 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 standard of life it matters <laughs> so in general would you say that Indonesia is a corrupt country yeah, yeah. We, uh, uh, I'm not say from my personal point of view it shows from the corruption index if you take a look on the corruption index uh, the last 10 years we getting worse uh, uh, the, in corruption we're not getting better we, we're, we're getting worse and yeah, that's that's the reality I don't I don't want to you know trying to oversell uh, uh, what happened in my country but the corruption uh, if you take a look on the corruption index that released by the international uh, organizations you can see that uh, the last 10 years we are getting worse mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay okay and uh, tell me a bit I'm not sure who are the good guys and who are the bad guys in the movie. This is for me very. I'm not sure who to cheer for. You know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Tell me a bit about that. But. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. To create. You know. Um, something that that that. I quite. Uh, rare to feel during if I watch an action movie action movie usually uh, the formula based on uh, characters journey you know there's a hero that we follow along the way uh, sometimes uh, he or she do revenge uh, uh, like John Wick for example like like uh, or uh, fighting for 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 uh, bigger goods or or or, or uh, big occasions like James Bond or uh, Jason Bourne, but to see films with with two perspectives, like for example, like Infernal Affair, <laughs> right? Uh, it's so Asian, right? So. Yeah. I'm trying to do something like that, you know. Uh, uh, so I believe that every person uh, has two sides of the coin. Uh, that uh, every action causes in something. That if we have a chance to understand maybe we can rooting to that and uh, our perspective as a human being would be challenged by by uh, uh, the the chaos of the action uh -huh, uh -huh. okay and the the story has the 
Okay, uh, this is I found a, a bit negative. But, uh, there are too many characters for me. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Why did you do this? so many? Which all of them are protagonists. Yeah. So. Uh, I think that's that's. Uh, maybe it's quite my experiment and uh, something that 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 I thought it would resonate to uh, especially the local audience you know where they can uh, choose which side or choose which character they want to uh, connect uh, one thing about like I said uh, in, in the beginning that that action movie it's not that popular in Indonesia especially especially this type of movie an esp espionage action movie this is the first time and we don't have strong narrative or imagination as a as a as a community about something like CIA or MI6 uh -huh. right we, we we don't have that we we, we we don't have James Bond in our culture uh -huh. we don't have Jason Bourne we don't do war with bigger country we don't we we are you know uh, mostly peaceful and uh, most of the time our our government fight its own people for 32 years so we don't we don't have those kind of those kind of uh, collective memory about about someone or some intelligence units that very powerful very cool so uh, I'm trying to figure it out what might be work uh, with our audience so I separate with three different uh, three different uh, point uh, three different group so the first group is the uh, uh, intelligent uh, agency uh -huh. and then the other one is the terrorist and uh, the third one is the uh, are the ordinary people that stuck or trapped in extraordinary situations the I thought the audience might be difficult to relate to this agency because they they <coughs> they never have they never has imagination about about this maybe they cannot relate to the terrorists because it's a terrorist in Indonesia always frame as bad people so I put this ordinary group uh, to become sort kind of um, relatable uh, point of view for the Indonesian audience that's what I design but for some people especially like like maybe like you it's kind of difficult to to rooting to to to, yeah, guess, to, to characters because yeah. there's too many yeah, yeah yeah okay and since we're talking about the characters let me bit about the casting you have all the creme de la creme of stars in Indonesia tell me yeah. a bit about that do you was it difficult casting them how did you came to bring them in uh, not really because uh, I'm also the writer of the story mm -hmm. so when I wrote the script I already pictured the cast uh, during the process of of the writing so like Arok I imagine it will be Rio Dewanto and then uh, Emil will be Ganindra Bimo so uh, I'm, I'm quite uh, fortunate that all the cast that I imagine during during the process of writing uh, they say yes uh -huh. Okay, okay. So and w was it difficult having like celebrities on the cast or mm. yeah, it's okay? No, because some of them, I, I've been worked with them before. Uh, only Chico Kurniawan that, that, that uh, I work with him for the first time in the in this movie uh -huh. so the rest of the the rest of the cast uh, uh, was 
uh, would work with me before uh -huh. uh, this film. So we become a friend before before this this production. Okay, and tell me a bit about this first uh, actions in the the bombing of the car and the man and that so around. Tell yeah. me a bit about how you shot that. I was really impressed with that scene. Yeah. Uh, It's very rare opportunity in Indonesia we can shoot with that sort kind of practical effect. Uh, and then uh, mostly uh, Indonesian production trying not to push the risk to do things like that. Uh, and uh, those people who do that kind of special effect because of there is a rare opportunity in Indonesia they work overseas uh -huh. they work in Thailand they work in Japan they work they work in Taiwan so the idea of making that scene also I want to bring back all the Indonesian talents that work overseas to Indonesia uh -huh. and make it and when we calculate the budget, we don't have the budget. <laughs> so, you know what? I only have one chance to do that. I only have one car to blow to, and only have one chance because we cannot afford to, to, to make two takes or take three. So, yeah, uh, I'm glad that I have a uh, very capable team that managed to have to to shoot that scene only in one chance one sh one take and it's done okay. Okay. And can you tell me a bit about the cinematography in general what you wanted to do in the visual aspect of the film let's say okay so uh, I said to my uh, director of photography that that uh, I don't want this to become sort kind of stylish in terms of lighting. Like for example, like you, you watch John Wick or Michael Bay's movie. But I want to make it more realistic. Like I like Powell Greengrass approach in, in, in his uh, action film. So I want to be more realistic. So we use a lot of practical uh, lighting and uh, the des production designer worked very closely with the chief lighting to create a set that have already have lighting setups so we don't need to uh, put or bring too many lights to the set so everything is already on the set and uh, and because of that setting uh, during the shoot I can easily moving the camera uh, anywhere I go even 360 uh, uh, in many scenes so uh, at that time uh, I really want to you know uh, look very realistic and then I want to uh, picture Jakarta in and uh, in t I call it beautiful mess. So you you don't see Jakarta like a modern city, but it's more like doji but but passionate. Uh, and then uh, for the camera movement, I want uh, I want the, at that time I said to my 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 director of photography, I want. Uh, the camera can move as fluid as the character so yeah that's that's what we do we 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 work uh, we set up the lighting uh, uh, with the set included into the set so it makes uh, much easier uh, to do the shoot uh -huh. And uh, tell me a bit about the martial arts direction. Who, who did the, the whole thing? The stunt coordination and the martial arts things? So, who uh, I designed all the action. Ah, you did, huh? I designed all the action uh, with the help from the choreographer uh -huh. uh, and also Armory. But 
most of uh, the action I design by myself because I'm very passionate in action genre. So I also want to learn how to how to create uh, things uh, uh, in a frame. Uh -huh. okay. okay. So I control every every uh, action elements of of, of, the, of of the movie. Okay. Okay. And uh, what is your opinion of the Indonesian movie industry at the moment? How would you describe it? Okay, this is interesting. Uh, I think you can see us as a like a China, maybe 15 years ago. You know when the the cinema start to growing rapid, very rapid, and uh, there is big wave of new audience because of now the penetration of the cinema uh, is happens to many second tier and third tier cities uh, so uh, there is a lot of lot of um, new audience but also mature audience uh, and then and then uh, with the horror movie is become sort kind of hype now a lot of action movie uh, a lot of horror movie being produced but I think it happens to anywhere uh, when the cinema industry starting to uh, increase uh, they want to serve new audience but uh, the audience also grow and that's where I want to be you know become become someone or a uh, storyteller that can bring uh, new things to grow the audience. Uh, that's why uh, the opportunity in, in Indonesian cinema is very huge. You can play as a for new audience or you can play in the process of the audience grow to be a major audience. Uh -huh. uh, what about censorship, though? Is there? How I, is it? Because your film, it's yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I think the la in the last fifteen years, we've seen that the censorship now is more more uh, liberal, more uh, uh, open-minded. Uh, now we don't it's quite rare to see that the sensor body cut your film uh -huh. but they classified your film you can you can uh, talk about sensitive issues with sensitive scene and you will get rating for 21 plus means every every audience that goes into your your studio must uh, must show their uh, ID, ID or you can uh, get 70 plus like my film 70 plus means only 17 above uh -huh. 17 years of above audience can watch my, my movie or you got you can get 13 or uh, 13 plus or uh, all ages so we have four classifications all ages 13 plus 17 plus and 20 plus 21 plus okay okay i got it. and the last question i guess after this and in your projects what are you working on next yeah i'm i'm uh now i'm making a suspense thriller romance uh -huh. uh, i bring back celluloid to indonesian cinema uh -huh. i shoot with three different f uh, format oh digital 60 millimeters and 35 milli mill millimeters. Wow, you don't like things easy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what people said. But yeah, like I said, I want to bring new, new things to Indonesian audience, and I think it's a huge opportunity to, you know, to make that positioning in uh, Indonesian uh, industry at this moment. Uh, and then after this, I will make another, another action movie. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, I guess that's it. 
थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू वेरी मच